Okay, so welcome back. Now, in the previous videos in this series, this playlist, we talked about charts in C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms, and we started talking about, for those of us who've been using .NET Framework for a number of years, we talked about whether we should start considering moving from .NET Framework to the latest and greatest, the new .NET, which is previously called .NET Core. And as I record this .NET, 8.0 just came out yesterday. So the thought is, should we upgrade from .NET Framework to .NET? And what are the pros and cons of .NET over .NET Framework? And the previous videos, we looked at some of those pros and cons and found that there was one huge issue, a jaw-dropping decision by Microsoft made years ago, where they decided to deprecate or remove completely the charts control in .NET Core and .NET. And for those of us in the science and engineering world, that's a huge deal because now we have to figure out what are we going to do? We use charts a lot. You know, what are the options? So we looked in the last video in this series, we looked at some of the options that are out there in the free and open source GitHub world and saw there were a bunch of them that have been abandoned many years ago. However, there were a few charting options for .NET. And we looked at those, and in the last video in the series, we focused on one of them called Scottplot. And we looked at some of the basics of Scottplot. How do you implement it? What is it like to program in Scottplot compared to the WinForms .NET Framework chart class? And we showed that it's got some benefits and um, we showed the basics of how to do programming to get your charts in Scottplot and how they are compared to the .NET Framework WinForms chart control. In this video, we're going to take the next step and we're going to look at some more features of Scottplot and how you can implement those. So here you can see a Scottplot control, a plot, and this is in .NET 6.0 C-Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms. And you can see we've got in this plot, we've got three waveforms. We've got a sine wave in blue, we've got a cosine wave in orange, and we've got an exponential decay of a sine wave in red. So we've got multiple series, or what are called plottables in Scottplot, and we've also added a secondary y-axis related to this orange cosine wave. And we'll also show you how to get what we have here. And this is an application we did a while back. This is c -sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms .NET Framework Chart Control. And this chart is a scrolling chart, which you see a lot in the engineering world, where we are gathering data in real time and we are keeping the last 30 minutes of data and it is scrolling off the data that is over 30 minutes old. So we're going to show you how to do scrolling charts also in Scottplot. And also we'll be talking about how to hide and unhide individual series, what are called series in the WinForms.NET Framework chart class. So let's jump into the c -sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms .NET 6.0 application, the solution, and see how we do this. So here's our application. And it's very similar to what we had in the previous video. I've moved some things around, but basically we have our Scott plot chart. And I encourage you to look at the previous video, how we got all that. And here is our main form. We're just using Scott plot. We showed you how to install that before. And the main player here is this event handler. When we press the chart button, it will take the data and chart it. So what I've got up here is I've added some, I've moved some stuff around and I've got some data that defines the different waveforms we're going to be charting. So I've got, as we had before, a public static int, which is how many points we're going to chart, and that's 10,000. So we got three series or plottables in Scott Plot Talk with 10,000 points. Um, the interval of the x-axis, we're going to have these 10,000 points, and each point is going to be sequentially 0 0.002 seconds or whatever. Uh, we've got two sine waves. One is a magnitude 5, one is a magnitude 2. Um, we've got two periods of the sine waves that we're going to generate. One's three waveforms, one's four waveforms. 
Uh, we're defining a font size of 18 and a line width for the lines that we're going to plot as two, and those require a float. So that's just getting some overall data. Here what we're going to do is like we did before, we're going to generate arrays of doubles. Again, Scott plot requires that you have arrays of doubles rather than lists as we have in the .NET Framework WinForms charts. So arrays of doubles, the same as we had before, we're using this data gen method and consecutive to populate an array of X values. And we're having the spacing is the interval of 0.002 seconds. You can have whatever you want. We get 10,000 points with that spacing. And then we're generating two more arrays, one with Y values and one with Z values. So one is a data gen sine as we did before. The other is a data gen cosine. So we've got our X values, our sine wave, and our cosine wave. And we've told it how many points, how many periods, and what is the magnitude of the sine waves. And that's about it. Uh, we're just setting up some other stuff. We have a timer also that we're not going to use right now. But that's about it. We'll go into the chart button and show you how we do this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our the same sine wave we had in the previous video. And we're calling it forms plot one. Again, this plot is called forms plot one by default. The Scott plot forms plot. Forms plot one dot plot. And we're going to add a scatter chart we talked about in the previous video comprised of the X values, the Y values, and we're having no markers and the line width that we specified and the color of dark blue. And what we're going to do is so that we can access this particular series, as it's called in winforms.net framework chart class, this is going to return what is called a plottable or a series. And we are going to call that plot one so that we can access it later and modify it. So we have added a scatter series to our plot. And then we are going to add a plot two, which is going to utilize the right hand Y axis or the Y2 axis. Again, var plot two forms plot one dot plot. It's on that plot one chart. And we're going to add another scatter with X vowels and Z vowels that we already defined. And again, marker size zero, line width is whatever line width, and the color, we're going to have color orange. And we've grabbed that series, and we're saying plot two series, the y-axis index is one. So we're assigning that data to the y-axis index of one, which is the right-hand side y-axis. The other one is defaults to the left-hand side, which is the index of zero. We're using the index of one for this data. So then we're saying forms plot one dot plot. And here is where we can actually show the ticks and the labels on the right hand y axis. We go forms plot one dot plot y axis two, which is the right hand axis. And we're going to enable the ticks. And what that does, if we start this up, it enables and shows us these ticks and the labels on the y axis. And then we're going to say plot y axis to tick label style. We're going to tell it what font size. We want it to be bold and we want a color of dark orange. So these are the steps you need to add a series or a plottable to the right hand y axis and set everything up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the third plottable or the third series where we're going to define a function. Now we said that Scottplot has this really nice data gen where you can generate sines and cosines, but it also has this add function method. And we're going to say forms plot one dot plot add function and define that as plot three. And what it's going to do is it's going to use this line to define the function that we want to plot. So this function is var func1 encapsulates a method that has one parameter and returns a value of the type specified in the double parameter, which is this. And using this format, this lambda expression, it's taking each x axis value and plugging it into this function. And this is where we get our exponential decay of a sine wave. We've got a math.sign 
evaluating the 5 times x, and then multiplying that times 5, and then applying an exponential over time. And that's giving us that exponential. So once we've got that function, we can just add it to the add function method and use the line width that we've already defined. And that has now generated a third plot. It hasn't actually plotted it, it's just generated that data. Later on, we're going to do a refresh which actually presents that new data. As before, we have set the y-axis and x-axis tick label style. We did that previously. Uh, we can also manually set the axis limits for the y or x or y2. And we've also customized the major and minor grid lines on the y-axis so we can modify that. But at this point, we get to where we were before, where we actually do the refresh to actually draw those plottables on that plot. And it's ready to go. And again, as before, we can do a save figure to save whatever we plotted. And here is the PNG we saved with the last plot that we did. Okay, so I think that's it for this one. In the last seven years and 350 videos, I've noticed that virtually every video about 60% of viewers leave within the first 60 seconds, presumably to go back and play video games because engineering is too difficult, I suppose. So I think in the next video, we'll maybe look at how to scroll this data and also how to hide and unhide each one of these series or plottables using these checkboxes. So if you're liking these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.